Hey guys, it's Holly from The Run Experience. Today we're talking couch to 5K training tips. If you are someone who has never run before and are looking to get started, or if you're someone who's taken a five to 10 year break on that uh, training, this video is for you. Get excited. All right guys, so before we get into the training tips, I wanna kind of break down what you're gonna be wearing for your training. If you're someone who's just come off the couch or maybe you just haven't run in a while, you're not up to date on the latest wear, it's good to kind of dial that in before you get out there because it is important. It's not just about how cool you're gonna look in your running photos, but it's really practicality and, and uh, there's a purpose to everything you wanna have on when you're running. So I'm gonna kind of break it down. I'm gonna go head to toe for you. So starting at the head, uh, hats and sunglasses are for a lot of people, if it's summertime, it's super sunny out, an absolute must, especially if you're gonna be out there for like an hour, even more than that, you know, down the road. I know we're, we're coming off the couch, but maybe down the road. Um, sunglasses, you can do, there are really light running sunglasses out there that are awesome. Tons of different brands you can mess around with. And ideally, you know, they don't move at all. They're super light, you barely even know they're on, but they do help block out that sun. Uh, hats you can play around with. There's different levels. If it's winter out, you know, it's a good way to absorb sweat up there on the head and protect you from getting too cold up there, which is awesome. Um, as far as your main clothes, you know, shorts and t-shirt is like the staple if you're in sunny California and you have that option available to you. Um, if you don't, just be mindful of how heavy whatever you're wearing is. So you don't wanna be in something super baggy that's just almost getting in the way of your movement. You want something that's gonna flow with you, breathe with you, dry pretty easily, uh, absorb sweat, you know, all those things are important. Um, as far as shorts or leggings go, for women, it's really a preference thing. Uh, for me, I really love leggings because they stick to you, they move with you, and they absorb sweat really easily. So even if it's 90 degrees out here or something, it's breathing super easy. Um, lastly, all the way down to the bottom, I'm gonna tell you guys more specifically about running shoes, but socks are just as important as well. You wanna get uh, running socks specific. Uh, you wanna just have something that's gonna hug that foot, absorb sweat, not move around, and you do not want blisters on your feet, so something that's gonna help you avoid those as well. All right guys, the second thing I wanna get into is running shoes and breaking down how to pick out your first or whatever pair it is for you. Uh, we have a few ways to talk about running shoes. I'm not gonna go down the rabbit hole of talking about every single detail of how they work and what separates each pair from another, but I'm gonna give you some general guidelines and tips for them and picking a good one. So. Uh, Basically, running shoes are kind of categorized by the level of cushioning they offer as well as the level of stability. So how much they're supporting you, what they're doing to your foot in response to what your foot is doing against the ground. Um, as far as what your foot is doing on its own without the shoe, uh, we have an awesome thing through the run experience, a gait analysis option uh, with Dr. Kyle Bowling. Basically a one-on-one -on -one video uh, session where he looks at how you're running and how your foot hits the ground which can then lead to um, some tips on what kind of shoe you are gonna be looking for. As far as the shoes get broken down, once you've gotten into the cushion and stability aspects of it, there's also um, different terrain that you'll be running on, depending on where you are or what kind of running you're looking to do. Uh, this is a trail shoe. So this is gonna be, you're seeing a lot of high tread there. So against rocks, um, mud, you know, sticks, loose gravel, that kind of thing. This shoe is designed to not just be on the road on area where you know how it's gonna be. This is gonna be kind of unknown territory. Uh, this one actually also has a rock plate in there as well. So you'll see some, a little bit harder um, soles on here just kind of protecting you against the outside. So that's a trail shoe. Uh, this one's New Balance, but there's millions out there, of course. And then this is just a basic road shoe. Um, I don't do too much road running, but when I am doing it, um, this is just by Nike and it's super light. Uh, good amount of cushioning, you can see this is super, this is gonna be really um, nice and soft when you hit the ground. I like it for that. Um, as far as how it feels, that's a good indication of how it's gonna work for you. So if you put it on and it feels absolutely miserable from the beginning, it's probably a good indication that it's not gonna be uh, great for running. Uh, so you can kind of play with that. You know, Obviously, any running shoe you try on, you wanna run in it to try it out. Even a, you know, a couple back and forths, especially if you're at a running store, it's a good place to do that. Um, a lot of people like to also go up maybe a half inch up from their normal shoe size at least. Um, you want a lot of space for your foot to spread out there. You're tracking miles or at least 30 minutes plus in one motion repeated and your feet are going to be swelling a little bit as well. So that extra half inch makes a big difference. 
So if you're looking for a pair of running shoes and you haven't bought them yet, um, and you want to do the gait analysis thing before and find everything out, we have an awesome partnership with runningwarehouse.com. Uh, they do a great job of breaking the shoes down, all the specs on it, how, how light or heavy it is, the colors, everything, what past uh, users have thought about this shoe and everything like that. So if you want to check them out, we will also drop a discount code down in the bottom of this video that you can check out. Uh, but yeah, that's going to be the running shoe portion on this. So the next thing I want to break down is your hydration technique for your training. Uh, I want to talk about a little bit why we sweat in the first place and why that even happens, especially so much to runners. Uh, when your body heats up, when you get that heart rate up and you're you know, getting out for that longer run or that longer training session, uh, a way of you know, controlling that heat for the body is going to be to sweat and to exert that perspiration. So um, you're going to be losing fluids and that's going to be the main point here. So you want to be replacing those and you want to be getting ahead of replacing those. So you don't, you don't wait until you've sweat to then replenish. You always want to be ahead of that uh, and always, always thinking about it, even on your off days. So I've got this little swell water bottle here. Um, not great to run with, but great to carry around with you. It keeps everything cold for like 24 hours plus. Um, of course, if you have a run experience, stick around it, it's even better. Uh, I like to just carry it with me all the time, always have it filled up. Um, something bigger even is great because you're just always committed to finishing it and, re and uh, refilling it as well. Uh, I like to say two liters a day without training is a good place to start if you're training that day even more. Uh, as far as if you're bringing something with you or, or just drinking before and after, that's up to you. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing anything longer than an hour without bringing something with you though, especially depending on the conditions outside. Um, so just basic water. Don't worry, in the, in the beginning, don't worry about electrolytes and, and bringing in all these mixes and stuff like that. I know you hear a lot about that really basic water is a good way to just put those fluids back into the body, you're gonna be sweating them out. Next thing we're talking about is training time. So uh, the time of day that you're actually getting out there and putting in this work, again, you know, I'm not sure what sort of plan you're gonna be on or if you're following something specific, but training at the same time of day is super valuable, especially for me when I was first getting started. Having that variation throughout the day, it's one, your body gets confused as far as muscle recovery and stuff if you're just constantly changing it up. Uh, but, but two, it's just something about you can stay more committed when you know, okay, 5 p.m. is when I work out every single day. It's just this thing that's on the calendar. Like anything else, if you have a meeting every Thursday, it's going to be the same way and you can build it in the same type of schedule. Um, so picking a time of day that works for you. Play with different things. You know, a lot of people say they're not morning people, but they can be easily persuaded, especially when they feel how good it is to get that run out of the way in the morning and then they have their whole day ahead of them they maybe feel a little bit more energized if that's not your thing and you want to just wind down at the end of the day with your workout absolutely fine just again try to find that consistency so try it out for a few weeks before deciding what does and doesn't work for you um, as far as what time of day also the um, when you eat is a is another indication of what will work for you if you're someone who training right off the bat without really having any meals in you beforehand feels the most comfortable. Maybe morning is the way to go. End of the day, reminding yourself throughout the day that you do have that run coming up, so kind of planning ahead as well. So find something consistent, play with it, and again, give it a week or two before you decide what works for you or what doesn't. All right, the last thing I wanna talk about with this Couch to 5K training tips is staying uh, motivated and how you can do that through different days of training. You know, once you're a month in, more than a month into this, how can you keep the ball rolling and keep yourself inspired and loving running more each and every day? Uh, the first way to do that is possibly just telling a friend of yours about your workouts, having them check you on the back end. Can they hold you accountable in some way? You know, you just tell them what you're gonna do. All they have to do is a couple hours later, how was that run or how was, how was that string session, you know? Just something checking in on you that's not just you promising yourself and then maybe breaking that promise down the road. Uh, the other option is finding a group. If you're, if you're a social person and you're already looking for that, you know, that bigger community, there are lots of local running groups. There's local running stores that organize those groups and those group runs. Uh, definitely check those out. Uh, all those people at one point or another were in your shoes or maybe are starting out like you are now. So they're definitely wanting to help you and there's all kinds of questions that can be answered there as well as just a simple motivation to show up. They're going to be there when you show up. Um, if you don't have anything local or you know you don't have a friend that, that is getting into the running scene with you at the moment, there's tons of online running groups and we have an awesome one. Uh, the Weekly Running Tune-Up group on Facebook. 
tons of runners posting each and every minute from around the world as their running photos, you know, how their run went that day, notes about what they're thinking about for their long run that weekend, all that kind of good stuff. We even have people posting that they just woke up and they really don't want to leave their house. And then we have 10 or 20 comments on there telling them to put their running shoes on and man up. <laughs> uh, so they're awesome ways to find that accountability, that community for running. The motivation is something that is always being built and there's tons of ways to do that. Hey guys, uh, we have a ton of other ways you can start building your training up and uh, working into your mobility and injury prevention, all that kind of fun stuff. If you haven't really done it before, this beginner running program, which is totally free to you, uh, is a good way to start. It's two weeks of workouts, um, some good strength, or some good mobility stuff and ways to get moving. Uh, all you have to do is put your name and email at the end of this uh, video in the link or down in the description. You can click on that as well and we will send that to you. If you liked this video, make sure you hit that like button down at the bottom. Bottom. Any comments or questions, something didn't make sense through these tips, uh, make sure you drop that below. And lastly, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We've got new videos coming out almost every day of the week. So we will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching.